हेलो ऑल क्या हाल चाल बढ़िया अमी ऑडिबल इन यूट्यूब चलो सो वी हैड डन टिल क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी येस्टरडे एंड देर आफ्टर वी विल स्टार्ट विल ट्राई टू कवर अनदर फोर्टी और फिफ्टी क्वेश्चन टूडे हो जाएगा कोशिश तो करेंगे करना तो पड़ेगा चलो ठीक अच्छा कल वाले में एनी डाउट देर आर टू थ्री डाउट्स दैट विल बी कवर्ड इन द कमिंग क्वेश्चन ओनली अबाउट आर्टिकल सिक्सटीन देर वॉज वन डाउट रिगार्डिंग इनर लाइन परमिट कि उत्तराखंड में इनर लाइन परमिट होता है कि नहीं राइट सो इन उत्तराखंड देर इज इट्स बिट कन्फ्यूजन ड्यू टू द वर्ड्स यूज उत्तराखंड में क्या उत्तराखंड इज अ बॉर्डरिंग स्टेट राइट तो इफ आई से दैट मेरा मैप थोड़ा जोग्राफी खराब है सबसे कमजोर सब्जेक्ट था तो मैप नहीं नहीं बना था मैं ये इंडिया है मेरे लिए राइट सो नॉर्थ साउथ ईस्ट वेस्ट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड राइट सो इफ से दैट दिस इज चाइना दिस इज आवर इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर राइट दिस इज इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर एंड दिस साइड वी हैव उत्तराखंड एक्सक्लूसिव जोन इज इन द क्वेश्चन सी राइट इन द कोस्ट लाइन so here they have used the word they will be demarcating one line this will be called inner line this will be called what inner line and there is another which is international border so this line is a bit backward than the inner, uh, international border so they will name it as inner line right so in these areas between inner line and the international border you require protected area permit so that is the protected area permit itself but that requirement is between inner line to the international border inner line is our domestic territory beyond that after some distance there will be what international boundary so in between these lines people of course from india also and the foreigners also they will require protected area area permit right the protected area permit we discussed yesterday तो इसके बीच में अभी चूंकि यहाँ इनर लाइन द वर्ड यूज हेयर इज इनर लाइन तो पीपल मे कन गेट कन्फ्यूज कि ये इनर लाइन परमिट की बात कर रहे हैं एक्चुअली ये क्या बात कर रहे हैं प्रोटेक्टेड एरिया परमिट की ही बट प्रोटेक्टेड एरिया परमिट कहाँ पे रिक्वायर्ड होगा बिटवीन इनर लाइन एंड द इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर राइट अब ये जो रिक्वायरमेंट है दैट इज देयर फॉर वेरियस स्टेट और कौन कौन से स्टेट्स है विच इज देयर आई जस्ट गिव यू द नेम्स that uh, on which all the states we have so this this requirement of protected area permit is there in uh, whole of arunachal pradesh parts of himachal pradesh jammu kashmir whole of manipur mizoram nagaland parts of rajasthan sikkim and parts of uttarakhand in these states we require all the borders so rajasthan is bordering with pakistan then you have jammu kashmir then you have uh, this thing um, uttarakhand then you have uh, the north eastern states which is usually bordering with the china so in all these states you will require what foreigners protected area permit right and this is as per the order foreigners protected area order 1958 so it is not that inner line permit is required by the foreigners it is protected area permit is required by the foreigners between these line between inner line and international border right so it's just the confusion of the names okay let's move on to question number 31 right which of the following people can get which of the following people can get overseas citizen of india oci cards which of the one is citizen of pakistan and bangladesh second is citizens of united states whose great grandparents were citizens of pakistan or bangladesh to dono ko milega dono ko nahi milega ek ko milega dusre ko nahi milega neither of them neither of them acha citizen of pakistan and bangladesh ko mana kar diya that is quite obvious right but uh, what about the person who is presently the citizen of united states yes so in this scheme there is a prohibition that if any person either he is a citizen of pakistan or bangladesh or 
his parents his grandparents or his great grandparents is or was the citizen of pakistan or bangladesh they are not eligible to get the oci card so here neither one nor two none of them will get the oci card right correct so our option is c so uh, which of the following can't get overseas citizen card so this is c both of them cannot get the overseas citizen of india card now next question is also related to the same concept overseas citizen of india right first statement says uh, we have to do a is find the true about the overseas citizenship when a person renounces the overseas citizenship their minor child also ceases to be an overseas citizen of india minor child whose parents is or are indian citizens can be registered as an overseas citizen of india so these are the two statements kaun sahi hai one one is correct a minor child whose parents are indian citizens can be registered as oci how now let's take an example let's take an example that uh, i and my wife are the indian citizen but my children were born outside india it is not necessarily that he will be an indian citizen right i will have to get him registered as a indian citizen because he will qualify to become an indian citizen what if he do not want to be i do not want him to be an indian citizen rather i want him to be citizen of united states american country ka banja bhai and then get a oci card for india it can happen so under the eligibility criteria there are lot of eligibility criteria you will find in your lakshmi kant book but persons who are minor child and if their parent either one both are the registered citizen of india they are eligible to get the oci card so here both will be eligible to get the overseas card of india So the answer shall be C. Answer shall be C. Citizenship Amendment Bill 2016 provides for which of the following? It is basically talking about cancellation of OCI registration. So which of these, either one, two, three, or four, are provided by the Amendment Bill of 2016? i'm specifically asking about 2016 i'm not asking in general in general maybe all of them would be correct but which one was introduced by 2016 amendment first one says cancellation of oci registration if oci has registered by fraud if a person has got the oci registration by concealing any fact willfully by defrauding producing the fake documents so is it liable to be forfeited it is but it was since the inception of this scheme it was not introduced in 2016 right again cancellation of oci registration for an individual if it is necessary for sovereignty and security of india it can be cancelled but it was again provided in the original scheme which was added is the third one cancellation of oci registration of oci if they violates any law that is in force in the country right what about the citizen of india what about the citizen of india a citizen of india if they violate any law for the time being in force in india so should their citizenship be cancelled what about any person who got the citizenship of india by naturalization and then they violate the law this we talked yesterday if any person say there is a person mr x there is a person mr x who was not a by birth citizen of india he was naturalized then he violated certain laws within india then should his citizenship be taken back no he will be prosecuted as per ipc crpc but if the same person goes on and violate any law outside india within 5 years of getting the citizenship and there he is sentenced for more than 2 years his citizenship is liable to be cancelled right okay so here in this case we have the third option which was introduced by 2016 amendment in the oci card scheme right again this is also related to oci because earlier there there used to be two schemes 
PIO and OCI, right? Both was merged. Both was merged, right? Uh, first is the high level committee on the Indian diaspora under chairman of L M Singh V had recommended dual citizenship for all PIOs. Second, dual citizenship may help towards harnessing goodwill of Indian diaspora, right? And overseas citizen of India have dual citizenship. One of India and one of another country, which they are originally living in. So, which of these are correct? Why not one? Yes. So he recommended for a few group of countries, the PIOs, person of Indian origin, living in few countries, they should be given the OCI membership, right? And uh, the person who is having OCI registration. that is not a dual citizenship that is not the dual citizenship that is simply a recognition that we are going to aaiye hamare desh mein bharat dekhi aapka desh hai kuch paise lagaiye garibon ka udhar kijiye so that is a kind of harnessing our indian diaspora so this is in no means it is a dual citizenship because if you read article 9 of our constitution that explicitly forbids the dual citizenship That if any person who acquires the citizenship voluntarily, वैसे नहीं कि बंदूक लगा के पाकिस्तान घूमने का बोला मैंने यहाँ रह जाओ तुम बहुत अच्छे हो तो वो नहीं होता Voluntarily, if anyone gives up his citizenship, his Indian citizenship will be forfeited, right? So two only is correct here because dual citizenship may help towards harnessing, but we do not accept that thing. What instead we have is that OCI registration. 35 the national registration uh, re register for the citizens 1951 we are talking about now that nrc is getting updated so it is talking about the original 1951 the national register for citizen 1951 originally contained a list of indian citizens residing in which of the current states which of the current states kehne ka matlab ye hai ki 1951 ke nrc mein ऐसे कौन से लोगों के बारे में बात की गई थी जो भारत के प्रेजेंट किस स्टेट में रहते हैं किन किन स्टेट्स को इंक्लूड किया था बिकॉज द पॉलिटिकल मैप ऑफ इंडिया फ्रॉम 1951 टिल टुडे हैज चेंज्ड सो इट इज मेनली यू हैव टू थिंक दैट विच ऑल स्टेट्स वेर इंक्लूडेड इन आसाम एनआरसी इज करेंटली ओनली बींग इंप्लीमेंटेड फॉर आसाम बट देन टू अदर स्टेट वेर ऑल्सो द पार्ट ऑफ द सेम स्टेट विच वेर दे आसाम अरुणाचल प्रदेश नागालैंड मणिपुर एंड त्रिपुरा Out of these five, the hint is only three. Earlier in Assam only, we had North East Frontier Agency, which was later renamed as Arunachal Pradesh, and Naga Tribal Areas, which were included as Nagaland. So earlier, when 1951 NRC was getting, uh, it 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 was made. So it included the people from all these three states: Assam, Arunachal, and Nagaland. Manipur and Tripura were existing differently, right? And these three were included in the Assam only. So our option is one, two, and three. Correct? Again, this is also related to National Register for Citizen (NRC), which is currently uh, getting updated. It is under the update process. So, which of the following is not true? Not true about the update process. of nrc for citizens which is going on currently in india as per the current parameters you have to consider these statement any citizen of india residing in any part of the territory can get his or her name registered in nrc by submitting the required documents any citizens in any part any citizens in any part no it is only about the people who are living in assam it is only currently it is getting updated only for assam it is a proposal but most of the state are not agreeing ki hum nrc lagaye apne yahan nrc pe kuch log bolte hain ki purane legacy documents kahan se leke aayenge so currently the current updation process is only going on for state of assam right so this one is a false statement only those citizens who are registered in the electoral rolls up to 1971 and their descendants can get registered in the nrc This is the catch point. पहला तो easy option था. Second वाले में. Right? 
one not only in the electoral rolls electoral is role is the one and it is the most popular so what did you need to to get entry into the nrc what do you need to show that i am a resident of assam right how can you show that either you were included in the 1951 nrc right suppose that uh, there was a mr person x he was there in 1951 nrc so his descendants will automatically be included i just need to show that he is my forefather i will be included so one document is that second document is till march 24 1971 if i was registered in the voter list of assam i will be getting entry or if there is any other valid document which can show my residence in state of assam then i shall be included in the nrc to so, voter list is not only one parameter electoral roll is not only one parameter right so this word makes it a false statement what is hame kya karna tha we were to look for incorrect not true so both are not true both are not true so sorry this is another question consider the following statements about these are the two tribes chakma and hajong community you will have to kisi ko pata hai in dono tribes ke bare mein have you previously read about it these are the tribal people originally they are mainly the inhabitants of bangladesh so these are the two communities they are the hindu religion they they follow hindu religion and this chakma people they follow buddhist right so basically there was a dam getting constructed so they had to leave their places and in search of their livelihood or life or settlement they entered into india right okay so uh, this is talking about chakma and hajongs are originally from bangladesh and were earlier not found in india thoda sa ye question frame karte samay statement uh, ambiguous frame ho gaya hai because they are originally from bangladesh ab uh, i don't have any conclusive evidence that they were not found even ek do bhi the ki nahi india mein so yeah, it is that they were originally from bangladesh it is a true fact right so i'll consider this statement as true originally and mostly they belong from bangladesh they came in large numbers around 60000 as per the current estimates we'll see around 60000 are present in india right so they migrated from bangladesh to india now second statement says constitutional amendment act 2015 provided the citizenship to these two communities are they been conferred the status of citizenship no the second statement is absolutely false there is a judgment of the supreme court which says in the same judgment in the 2015 that judgment of the supreme court asked the government to give them the citizenship but when it was consulted with the local government the state government then the prema khandu the, he was the, the chief minister so he told that no i will not uh, be compromising with the natural rights of the local original inhabitants so till now they have not been given the citizenship status however there is a, is a judgment of supreme court that says they should be given the fact is they have not been given yet right okay uh, there is one also there is one another catch that if you see the 2019 citizenship amendment act it allowed what the people from non muslim communities to eligible to be eligible to acquire the citizenship of india but the caa arunachal pradesh is exempted from caa so te technically they also will not get under the caa 19 2019 so 2019 mein bhi usko hum citizenship abhi tak nahi de paaye in these two communities despite being arunachal mein bhi milte hain assam mein bhi milte hain don jagah mein Assam government, there is a particular student union in Arunachal Pradesh. They are boycotting grant of citizenship. All uh, Arunachal Students Union kind of this organization. Okay. So here, considering the first statement as true, second as false, we will get an option. Why do we require constitutional amendment for that matter? 
because there is a citizenship act of 1955 and any ordinary act will be requiring only simple majority if you go on to amend the constitution the government or the party in power who is willing to grant them citizenship they will require two third amendment that is a tough thing to achieve so it's better to amend citizenship act rather than going for constitutional amendment right question number 38 you can amend the constitution you can grant provided that you do not hamper with the basic structure provided you but which feature you will amend 5 6 and 8 5 6 7 8 8 you will simply amend the constitution that till 2023 those who so ever are present in india domicile in india i am giving the citizenship to one and all you can do that it is quite possible because constitution makers did not want ki every time for granting the citizenship you need to do amendment this is why they provided parliament the power to keep on changing the laws with changing times right consider the following statement about citizenship in india constitution of india provides provisions with respect to acquisition and termination of citizenship and all other matters related to the citizenship no they have dealt only about the people who were existing during the making of the constitution apart from that others power have been delegated to the parliament they have created the act and accordingly it is dealt with constitution of india provides that no person shall be a citizen of india who voluntarily acquires the citizenship of any foreign state this is article 9 this is true statement so first is false second is true our answer is b our answer is b right to privacy right to privacy 21 asked in 2021 if you see ji sawal ab upsc nahi puch sakti theek so right to privacy is protected under article 21 there were back to back questions from right to privacy 2021 may be or 2022 may be i think consider the following statement about article 14 of the constitution of india the article 14 confers equality before law and equal protection of law on citizens foreigners as well as the person as well as the legal persons within the territory of india one is citizens one is foreigner who is who are the legal persons companies incorporated companies those in whose name case can be filed or who can file a case they are called the juristic person or legal person both are same name The concept of equality before law in the Indian Constitution is of American origin and connotes the equality of treatment under equal circumstances, both in privileges conferred and liabilities imposed by the laws. There is two point. One is it is British in origin, and this explanation is about equal protection of law, not the equality before law. So the second statement remains false. so our answer is we have to find correct or incorrect correct so hamara answer kya hoga one is correct two is not correct answer is a answer is a which of the following are regarded as the main features of rule of law rule of law uh, we discussed yesterday also this concept the theory of rule of law is given by avdic is an english person so he gives three principles of rule of law one is what there has to be absence of arbitrary power second there has to be equality before law whosoever how high soever law is above them so there is second concept third concept he talks about is preponderance of individual right that individuals right that, that is a more kind of a liberal idea that my individuals right is more superior than anything else but in india what we do we place various kinds of restrictions on individual right in the name of common good in the name of uh, sovereignty integrity of state security of the state right so what we follow is the first two ideals and they are inscribed under article 14 itself so what are the three principle of rule of law limitation of powers equality before law people's responsibility to the government is it it's government responsibility towards the people like if you ask if you hold government accountable towards the people 
this means they will not be able to act arbitrarily they have to answer they have to give reasons for their actions right okay so uh, first is there second is there third one is not there fourth liberty and civil rights so our answer is going to be 1 2 and 4 c in youtube anyone any confusion so far Yes, Imtiaz Khan is saying protected area permit is required to visit the bordering district of Jammu Kashmir. We discussed. Consider the following statements about the immunities enjoyed by the President under Article 361 of the Indian Constitution. There are certain privileges which have been given to Governor, which has been given to the President. Both are given in Article 361 of the Constitution. So, wherever they will write that governor, Raj Pramukh or the president, it is written president or governor or Raj Pramukh. So, it is all similar, right? But president is not similar to governor, okay? President cannot be arrested during his term of office even for an act done in his personal capacity. Even for an act done in his personal capacity, can president be arrested during the tenure of office? So, no, he cannot be arrested. Secondly, civil proceedings against the president can be instituted in a court in his term of office in the respect of an act done by him in the personal capacity only after two months notice has been served to him. Correct? Two months ka notice hona chahiye. Can there be an arrest in the civil case? Civil case. In criminal case, there will be, no, I am not talking about the privileges given to the president. Generally, I am talking about. In a civil case, can any person be arrested? How? Any person, any person, I, you, any person. So, IPC is criminal law. Civil case, uh, let us suppose that uh, I come to you, you are selling a pen, I bought this pen, I ran away without giving you money, you filed a case against me, court will call me, yes, come, what is your uh, grant, what is your stand here, clarify this, why are you not paying to him or her? So, I will have to go to court. What if I am not going to court? Court will send me a summon. Again, I am not going. Court will send me a warrant in lieu of summon. Again, I am not going. Do bande bejing, uthake lao. So, even in the civil case, a person can be arrested. Like, suppose that uh, court has imposed a penalty of 5 lakhs on me. I am very poor person. I do not have the money to pay. Then I will choose that, send me to jail for 6 months. So, in civil cases also, people can be arrested. Now, these are the two immunities given to the president or governor. Similarly, there is another kind of immunity which has been given to our legislators, the members of parliament, the members of legislative assembly. They cannot be arrested during the session, before 40 days start of the session and after 40 days start of the session. But this protection is only available in civil cases, not in the criminal cases. अगर क्रिमिनल केस करोगे कितने बड़े नेता हो सरकार के अगेंस्ट हो तो ले जाएंगे उठा के आगे की बात आप समझते हैं ठीक है तो प्रेसिडेंट कैन नॉट बी अरेस्टेड ट्रू सिविल प्रोसीडिंग्स कैन ओनली बी इंस्टीट्यूटेड अगेंस्ट हिम बाय गिविंग अ टू मंथ्स प्रायर नोटिस बोथ ऑफ दीज आर करेक्ट अबाउट आर्टिकल 15. Consider the following statements about Article 15 of the Constitution of India. It prohibits any discrimination on the grounds of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth against any person by state. Why? There are few rights, fundamental rights, which are only reserved for the citizen of India. Article 15, 16, 19, 30. So, these are the five articles which only applies to the citizen of India, here it is written against any person, it should be the citizen only. So, this statement is false. It only prohibits any disability and liability against the citizen with respect to access to shops, public restaurant, hotels, etc. We will include, we will consider ki isme amusement parks, wo sab bhi hain. Right. Discrimination is basis pe ho sakta. But what are the forms of discrimination which were practiced during the making of our constitution? Ye kisi caste ke logo ko 
they were not allowed to go into particular shop untouchability ke karan kisi bhi karan so this is given under article 152 of the constitution this statement happens to be true right okay so second one is true first one is false because of the word person it should be rather citizen okay. a comprehensive anti discrimination law in india may serve which of the following purposes for a mains type ka question hai but kafi simple logic laga ke you can solve it may increase awareness about the various forms of discrimination in india and contribute towards the reversal of deep rooted cultural discrimination if you bring any kind of comprehensive anti discrimination law still we have various kinds of anti discriminatory law but either they are too harsh or they are too liberal one of the very liberal act is civil rights protection act we will talk about that article 17 se related hai right छः महीने की सजा है उसमें ऐसे करके जाते हैं लोग जेल से आते हैं फिर वापस फिर करते हैं बिकॉज पीपल इन हुज माइंड दे आर सो सच काइंड ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन आर देयर फॉर देम आपने वो मूवी देखी है आक्रोश है ना उसमें क्या बोलते हैं जेल में भी जाके बोलते हैं बाहर आऊँगा फिर मारूंगा तो इस हद तक गए तो फॉर देम सिक्स मंथ इज नॉट अ बिग डील नाउ दिस सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट से इट मे एड टू द डेफिनेशनल क्लियरिटी अबाउट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन untouchability word simply has been written in the constitution it has not been defined agla question to hai it may help existing national commission to better handle complaints on discrimination it will eliminate all forms of caste religion gender based discrimination from india it is not necessary it will require a multi dimensional approach law only cannot bring social change law is one medium of bringing social change sometimes social change can also bring some laws into it remember raja ram mohan rai the sati abolition act was by product of what he did so his actions the social development post government to bring that kind of act. so sometimes social change can also bring law sometimes laws can also inspire social change but it is not only these two things can do the social change you require uh, reformation magaz ka dimag ka and then you will require overall awareness people's participation is very necessary because any law you make without people's participation that is not going to prevail for long farm law hai na so fourth one is not a apt statement other three are almost correct they are correct right so we have 1 2 3 3 as the correct choice c is the correct which of the following is not an exception mentioned under the article uh, under article 15 of the constitution state can make special provision for women and children it is mentioned state can make special provision for the advancement of socially and educationally backward classes of citizens state can make special provision for the advancement of economically weaker section of the citizens parliament can prescribe residence as the condition for certain employment or appointment under the state or union territory it is under article 16 so d option d it is not mentioned under article 15 it is rather mentioned under article 16 so our choice is that this is not mentioned under article 15 same question but with regards to article 16 which of the following is or are exceptions mentioned under article 16 of the constitution a law by the parliament or the state legislature can provide that a class of employment to an office under the state or union territory will have residence within that state or union territory as a prerequisite what is the wrong here state legislature so this power is only with the parliament what is the baat main state can provide reservation to the people from economically weaker section in the government state can provide here state includes what union as well as the state 
So EWS reservation we talked about the maximum limit for that is 10 percent. Central government has kept it at for 10 percent. So if you are applying for UPSC and some person belongs to some person belongs to EWS, they will get 10 percent reservation. But it may vary in the state examination. Chhattisgarh has only 4 percent of reservation. Right. So, the maximum capping is for 10 percent, but it can be lesser than the 10 percent also. So, this statement is true. First is false. Why false? Because the residence as a criteria, it is correct, it can be provided, but it can only be done by parliament. It cannot be done by state legislature, right. But Article 16 also talks about that there can be no discrimination on the grounds of residence. Then why did this? These two are almost contrasting provisions to each other. Now, it may catch here that it can be done only by the parliament. But for Jammu Kashmir, me kyu milta hai? Andhra Pradesh, me kyu milta hai? Why not in all the states? So, Andhra Pradesh, they all get these relaxations from Article 371. They have been given certain exemptions. So, 371D, is me 371D, is me Andhra Pradesh ko exemption diya hua hai. Uthi tara, Jammu Kashmir ko bhi, before that they were given only the domicile. Now also, after the Jammu Kashmir ko dismantle kiya gaya, per government notification nikala, abhi bhi wahan pe bhoat saare jobs mein. Now, even in the certain other states, you will find there are reservation, but not in the class 1 or class 2 posts. These reservations are mostly in class 3, 4, grade 3 or grade, grade 4 posts. But any such law can be done by the parliament also only. Okay. So, parliament, uh, what parliament did, parliament ne ek act banaya tha, I am forgetting the year. So, parliament enacted one act, employment, public employment. Act 1957. Parliament ne Public Employment Act 1957 Till that time, wherever the state residence was made a criteria, this act abolished all of them. Isse pehle jahan bhi state residence ko a criteria maante the. Parliament was vested this with this power under Article 16. So, Parliament created this act and abolished all those existing reservation on the basis of residence. Jitne bhi class 1, class 2 post mein the, wo kar diya. Abo question may arise that why Parliament only, why not state legislature is allowed? Because state government are working at a very local level. They may be driven away by the public pressure sometimes. Then why do we need to have an overall without uh, any residence criteria? Why citizens cannot be di discriminated? Because it will be contrary to our provisions of the constitution. What we do? We prescribe for a single citizenship. But if a citizen of Maharashtra is not allowed in Delhi to do the job for them, they will be treated like a second class citizen in their own country. So, this we residence ke basis pe discriminate nahi kar sakte. Wo article 16 mein likha hua hai. But from states mein kya hota hai, there is a language variation. Like class 3 and class 4, jo clerical jobs hote hain, they are required to do the public dealing. Ek person who is posted in Tamil Nadu, he is a postal clerk, suppose, who do you expect he is serving? The local population of Tamil Nadu. It is not expected that they will be very fluent in Hindi. If you send any person from Delhi, he will be only knowing Hindi. So, aise kaam to chalta nahi hai. So, for these, due to these reasons, kuch states mein, kya kya hai residence ke requirement rakhi hai. Certain states also prescribe the test of language, local language, wo bhi karte hai, because of these reasons, right. But this act mein, all the existing reservation on the basis of residence, which were enacted by various state legislature, they were abolished. But there are certain exceptions, exceptions for Himachal Pradesh, Manipur, Tripura, and then the part of Andhra Pradesh which was under the Telangana. Abhi jo Telangana hai, us samay Andhra Pradesh tha, usko li, uske liye humne exception create kiya hai under this act, right. What was the reason? The social backwardness of these areas, 
इन एरियाज में सोशल बैकवर्डनेस के कारण हमने उनको इस एक्ट से एग्जाम करके रखा है सो देयर रेजिडेंस एज ए क्राइटेरिया इन पब्लिक अपॉइंटमेंट इज वैलिड इवन दो आफ्टर दिस एक्ट हैज बीन इनएक्टेड बाई द पार्लियामेंट राइट तो ये पूरी इसकी कहानी है क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी सेवन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज और आर ट्रू अबाउट द रिसेंट रिजर्वेशन इन हायर एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड जॉब प्रोवाइडेड टू इकोनॉमिकली वीकर सेक्शन ऑफ द सोसाइटी थ्रू वन जीरो थर्ड कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट एक्ट सो वी नो दैट थ्रू दिस एक्ट पार्लियामेंट एक्सटेंडेड द रिजर्वेशन टू फ्यू पर्सन हुज इनकम ब्रैकेट फैमिली इनकम इज बिलो एट लैक्स पर एन एम देर आर सर्टन अदर क्राइटेरिया like land holding owning a residential property in urban area having an agricultural plot so uske kuch criteria hai agar inme se koi fulfill karta hai unko reservation nahi milti hai those who are not having this much of property or income less than 8 lakh family income it's not his own income right family income so unko 10% maximum reservation milta hai but this benefit can be availed by all economically weaker section of the society no were excluded so ews reservation can only be given to those person who are already not included in caste based reservation right so unreserved category those persons who were living in unreserved category before 103 amendment act agar unme se kisi ka income kam hai unme se koi ews hai they will be getting the benefit of this 10% reservation the constitution itself caps the reservation at 10% of the total seats in the jobs which are offered is there any this kind of capping in the constitution we have just now discussed so second statement is true first is not true so we have to find correct na ya incorrect so b is the choice reservation ke upar ek bahut famous sa case hai this m nagraj versus यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया एक्चुअली दो केसेस हैं यू माइट हैव रेड अबाउट इट इंदिरा सोनी केस एंड देन के एम नागराज केस राइट दीज टू आर वेरी लैंडमार्क जजमेंट्स ऑन रिजर्वेशन सो फर्स्ट इज सेंग विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज और आर ट्रू अबाउट द सुप्रीम कोर्ट वर्डिक इन एम नागराज वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया इट अपहेल्ड द सेवेंटी सेवेंथ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट विच वेयर एम्ड एट अलाउविंग द रिजर्वेशन इन द प्रोमोशन फॉर शेड्यूल कास्ट एंड शेड्यूल ट्राइव now it is about what reservation in promotion so firstly you should know scs st obc ews they are getting reservations in what appointment so appointment is at the entry level in any kind of job suppose that you are you have filled the civil services form so you must have seen the division of seats according to the reserved criteria wo aaya hoga iski itni seat hai uski itni seat hai right so this is at the time of appointment but once you go into the services is there any category of person or any category of citizen are they giving uh, are, are they getting any kind of reservation who are they sc and st through which amendment act it was inserted this amendment act 77th amendment act so this 77th amendment act introduced the reservation in promotion in promotion for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes if i include obc obcs are not getting reservations in promotion right sc and st is through 77th amendment now second option says it provided that state can give reservation in promotion to schedule caste and schedule tribes if they have quantifiable data showing backwardness of the community and inadequacy in representation of the community at that service what is the logic behind giving this reservation in promotion ek survey hua tha 2012 mein i think in the government of india uh, in the अभी हमारा कंट्री इंडिपेंडेंट हुआ कब 47 वी अप्लाइड द सोशियो एजुकेशनली बैकवर्ड क्लासेस को जो प्रोटेक्शन मिलनी थी दैट इज देयर सिंस फाइव सेवन डेकेड्स इन इंडिया बट स्टिल इन 2017 व्हेन द सर्वे वाज कंडक्टेड इन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया तीन से चार लोग सेक्रेटरी लेवल पे थे हु बिलोंग टू शेड्यूल कास्ट एंड शेड्यूल ट्राइब even then you will find that uh, if a person is ias he is belonging from scheduled caste then the person who is subordinate to him is a brahmin they prefer not to have the lunch with them so hota hai you go to the rural india 
यू विल फाइंड दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग दिल्ली में अब सब लोग क्या है ना मेट्रो वाले हैं अब आई हो या फिर प्राइवेट वाले हो सब वही मेट्रो में जाते दिखेगा अब टू बी में वो आई भी रह रहा है और टू बी में कॉरपोरेट वाला भी रह रहा है तो उसमें कुछ नहीं होता कॉरपोरेट इन कॉरपोरेट यू विल फाइंड वेरियस अदर काइंड ऑफ लिमिटेशन देर इज ए ग्लास लिंक फॉर फीमेल्स है ना कॉरपोरेट में बोलते हैं ग्लास लिंक है कि यू विल रेयरली फाइंड द फीमेल्स एट द सी ओ पोजिशन नाइका बिकेम वेरी फेमस क्योंकि इट वॉज हेडेड बाई अ फीमेल पर्सन राइट तो इस तरह की इन एडिक्वेसी इन द रिप्रेजेंटेशन थी इस वजह से सेवेंटी सेवेंथ अमेंडमेंट एक्ट वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस राइट सो नाउ हेयर इट इज सेंग दैट ओके स्टेट कैन गिव द रिजर्वेशन इन द प्रोमोशन बट दे नीड टू शो दैट दे हैव द क्वान्टिफाइबल डाटा फॉर वट शोइंग दैट दिस कम्युनिटी इज अंडर रिप्रेजेंटेड इन द सर्विसेज राइट सो हेयर बोथ द स्टेटमेंट स्टैंड ट्रू राइट बोथ द स्टेटमेंट ट्रू अब थोड़े डायरेक्ट डायरेक्ट वाले क्वेश्चन आ रहे हैं ना वन ऑफ द इम्प्लीकेशन ऑफ इक्वलिटी इन द सोसाइटी इज द एबसेंस ऑफ प्रिवेलेज एबसेंस ऑफ रिस्ट्रेंट इज कॉल्ड लिबर्टी बट यूपीएससी ने तो क्वेश्चन पूछा था उसमें एबसेंस ऑफ रिस्ट्रेंट भी था एंड अपॉर्चुनिटी टू डेवलप वन सेल्फ फुल्ली बट यूपीएससी टूक अपॉर्चुनिटी टू डेवलप वन सेल्फ फुल्ली एज द की वाई बिकॉज वॉट यू विल यू डू विद एबसेंस ऑफ रिस्ट्रेंट वट इज द अल्टीमेट एंड is the development of all round development actually these two lines are written in your ncert so if you go and read political theory wali ncert jahan pe liberty shuru hota hai it starts that liberty means absence of restraint and opportunity to develop oneself fully ab wo question frame karte hue galti hui ya kya hui ki to unhi ka manna hai hai na so equality in the society means absence of privileges but we know that there are certain privileged post it is not the privileges which are given to the person it is given to the post right our answer is absence of privileges in mukesh kumar versus the state of uttarakhand the supreme court gave which of the following verdicts reservation in government jobs for the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes is a fundamental right reservation in promotion in the government job for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes is not a fundamental right reserving 100% seats for scheduled tribes in government school of scheduled areas is unconstitutional all of them reservation is not a fundamental right this be sure reservation is just an affirmative action on the part of the state it is not a fundamental right this 100% rule was struck down in this particular case of andhra pradesh and also there is another case of jharkhand also so relying on this judgment of the supreme court the jharkhand high court also quashed this reservation of 100% jharkhand mein bhi sarkar 100% reservation include kar rahi thi for scheduled tribes but that was struck down relying on this judgment of the supreme court kyunki so, isne pehle hi bola hai 100% reservation nahi chalega you, you can give affirmative action but not on the cost of overall merit no this we are talking about particular judgment hai right? na answer is b it is not a fundamental right and this was decided in mukesh kumar case so this is yesterday's handout 50 questions tak the jo kal ka hamara beech rehta hai abhi aaj wala koi ek bar bulana hum baat call the uh hemant is asking 15 16 19 29 and 30 available for the person who becomes citizenship uh, citizen of india through the naturalization we do, do not discriminate between citizens on the basis of naturalized citizen aaj on the basis of naturalization or by birth such discrimination is in united states not in india so be it any kind of citizen a citizen is a citizen so any citizen whether by naturalization or registration or uh, any by birth or by acquisition of territory they will all get article 15 16 29 and 30 exclusively
नहीं 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 ऐसे क्यों नहीं फाइव जी आ गया आपके फोन में आ गया देर वॉज ए कमिटी फॉर फाइव जी किसके अंदर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन में है फाइव जी फिफ्टी वन में बट दैट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट अनदर कमिटी देर इज अ कमिटी विच वॉज फॉर्म अंडर के जी बालकृष्णन सो ही इज द फॉर्मर चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया ही ऑल्सो सॉव एज नेशनल ह्यूमन राइट कमीशन तो बाई लॉ विच आर द कम्युनिटी देखो दो यू कैन क्लासीफाई इफ यू हैव टू डू रीजनेबल क्लासीफिकेशन फॉर गिविंग द रिजर्वेशन यू कैन क्लासीफाई वन इज वॉट माइनॉरिटी एंड अनदर आर दलित इन दोनों को रिजर्वेशन मिला हुआ है आर माइनॉरिटी एंड दलित सेम नो वट इज द डिफरेंस माइनॉरिटी इज ऑन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ लैंग्वेज और रिलीजन बहुत भी रिकॉग्नाइज लिंग्विस्टिक एंड रिलीजियस माइनॉरिटीज ठीक है तो इफ आई टॉक अबाउट देर आर सिक्स रिकॉग्नाइज रिलीजन विच आर कंसिडर्ड टू बी माइनॉरिटी इन इंडिया इस्लाम क्रिश्चन्स बुद्धिस्ट सिख जैन एंड पारसीज दीज आर दिक्स रिलीजन विच हैव बीन रिकॉग्नाइज आउट ऑफ दिस सिक्स रिलीजन देर वुड बी दलित इन ऑल द रिलीजन तो क्या सारे रिलीजन्स के दलित को हमने रिजर्वेशन दिया है आर द दलित फ्रॉम ऑल दीज रिलीजन टर्म्ड एज एस सीज एंड एस टी नो वी डू नॉट कंसिडर फॉर एस सीज एंड एस टी वी डू नॉट कंसिडर द पीपल हु आर द दलित दलित टर्म है मतलब वी शुड नॉट थिंक समन एज दलित बट इट इज हिस्टोरिकल यूज एज टर्म ठीक है तो दे इफ द एनी पर्सन हु इज बिलोंगिंग फ्रॉम दलित कम्युनिटी एंड दे आर फ्रॉम मुस्लिम इस्लाम और क्रिश्चन uh, they are not considered as scheduled caste right scheduled caste is a constitutional term dalits or non dalits or sovereign you can say this is in the indian history right religion is on the basis of your personal choice so whichever religion you subscribe to so these three are different concept so ek religion mein dalit ho sakte hain ek religion mein non dalit bhi ho sakte hain so uh, kuch dalit ko humne scheduled caste consider kiya hua hai so there are some dalits in few of the religion which have been given the status of scheduled caste few not so the dalits in the islam and in the christianity they have not been given the status of scheduled caste why what is the stand of the government in this hmm so government is saying that uh, there was no concept of discrimination on the basis of caste in the, uh, christianity or in the islam so we cannot give them the caste based reservation right so next two questions are based on that चलो लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी वन सो क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी वन सेज रिसेंटली के जी बालकृष्ण कमीशन वॉज फॉर्म रिसेंटली टू एग्जामिन द मैटर्स ऑफ अकॉर्डिंग द शेड्यूल कास्ट स्टेटस टू दलित हुव कन्वर्टेड टू इस्लाम इन क्रिश्चनिटी 
examine the india's readiness for 5g technology examine the extent of school dropouts among the student after covid-19 pandemic so we discussed already it was based on based to examine the uh, giving schedule caste status to muslims and christian community our answer is a presently the constitution recognizes the dalit community as the scheduled caste from which of the following religions hinduism islam christianity buddhism and sikhism so we will exclude islam and christianity from here 1 4 and 5 this is c question number 53 says the term untouchability has not been used in article 17 of the constitution it has been used but it has not been defined it has not been defined in the constitution of india rights under article 17 is available against the state only not against the private individuals this is one of the very absolute fundamental right untouchability in any form is abolished in india and it shall be punished what is the punishment prescribed for a practicing untouchability in constitution no punishment is prescribed for that there is a civil rights protection act so that civil rights protection protection act punishes various kinds of disabilities which is arising out of untouchability untouchability karne se kya hota hai i will say that people certain xyz people will not cross this line meaning i am going to temple i feel myself a privileged class and certain other persons are discriminated so they have been incurred with religious disability i will not include them in the social gathering i will not let him use the community marriage hall social disability i will not allow the persons from particular caste to practice profession of their own choice bal kaatne wale ka beta bal kaatne wala banega this is what economic disabilities so these kinds of disabilities are punished under civil rights protection act the problem with the act is 6 months punishment maximum punishment prescribed that to for repeat, re, repeat offenders ek saal ki theek hai so the the act you can say is a bit weak in the present context because after 75 years of independence ideally there should have been not been a use of that particular act us act ki zarurat hi nahi padni chahiye thi society should have been very equal for that matter but nahi hai so you will have to work upon that so uh, in this question untouchability has been used this statement is wrong it has not been defined it is true rights under article 17 is available against both so our correct statement is c to only which of the following is not true about freedom of speech and expression mentioned under article 15 of the constitution the six rights are protected against only state action are not private individuals reasonable restrictions on freedom of speech and expression under article 19 cannot be imposed on the grounds of seditious activities cannot be imposed on grounds of seditious activity why it can be sedition is uh, where sedition is given 124a is it a criminal offence so article 19 sub clause 2 contains that you cannot give any speech which is inciting an offense so that will be covered aap kisi ko koi crime karne ke liye uksa nahi sakte that is not amounting to your freedom of speech and expression right sedition is a crime in itself and if you are promoting seditious activity you cannot you cannot say that it is a freedom of speech and expression sedition cannot be but sedition now it is it there are pre colonial law only but that is a kind of offense itself ab dekho usme last word kya use kiya gaya hai bahut sare aap bolo ki can you incite anyone to commit murder agar main yahan khada ho ke bol jata hu ki usko goli maar do can i say it freedom of speech and expression If you particularly go and you go for literal interpretation कि वहाँ पे वर्ड लिखा है ये सेडिशन या नहीं 
sedition word is not mentioned under article 19 sub clause 2 right but if you are promoting seditious activity by your speech and action your speech and uh, expression can be curtailed on that ground agar aap seditious activity promote kar rahe ho kanaiya kumar ya kisi wo join you mein jo bol rahe the unko humne kya bola that was their freedom of speech and expression but us pe restriction lagane ki zarurat kyun hai सिंपली अगर कोई एक बात होती तो हम उसको आईपीसी के अंदर पनिश कर देते बट इट इज दैट कैन यू टॉक इन पब्लिक कुछ उस तरह की पोस्टर्स आप बना सकते हैं कुछ सिडिशियस सिनेमा आप बना सकते हैं कैन यू प्रोमोट नो बट इफ यू टॉक दैट वर्ड लिखा है कि नहीं वर्ड नहीं लिखा है दिस इज वेरी क्लियर द वर्ड सिडिशन इज नॉट मैंशनड अंडर आर्टिकल नाइनटीन टू विच प्रोमोट विच प्रेस्क्राइब फॉर रिजनेबल रिस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन द फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच एंड एक्सप्रेशन ठीक है यहां पे क्या आंसर होगा हमारा विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज ट्रू अबाउट फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच एंड एक्सप्रेशन अच्छा सॉरी नॉट ट्रू लिखा हुआ है तो बी ऑप्शन लेके चल रहे हैं अभी बट आई एम मेकिंग इट क्लियर एज हर स्टेटमेंट इज सडिशन द वर्ड सडिशन इज नॉट यूज सो यू विल आंसर योर क्वेश्चन इन द एग्जामिनेशन अकॉर्डिंगली Which one of the following is true about Article 24 of the Constitution? It prohibits the employment of children below age of 14. Is it? Uh, exactly, that case. Tell me what happened. सेडिशन दैट इज अनदर थिंग ना कि सेडिशन के अंदर प्रोसिक्यूशन आप करेंगे या नहीं करेंगे अरेस्ट करेंगे या नहीं करेंगे वो तो एक डिफरेंट इंटायरली डिफरेंट मैटर हो गया अब उस पर अगर कोई जजमेंट आ जाता है सुप्रीम कोर्ट बोलती है नहीं यू नीड टू चेंज योर सेडिशन लॉ लॉ कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया हैज ऑल्सो टोल्ड किसी सेडिशन ऑफ वन ट्वेंटी फोर ए हटा दो इट इज अ रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ लॉ कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया ऑल्सो दैट दिस इज अ प्री कॉलोनियल लॉ एंड द पर्पज ऑफ दिस वॉज टू सप्रेस द फ्रीडम मूवमेंट ऑफ इंडिया सो वाई वी आर कैरिंग द लॉ एट ऑल बट बात यह है कि आप सिडिशियस एक्टिविटीज को इफ समन इज ट्राइंग टू प्रोमोट बाई देर स्पीच और एक्सप्रेशन तो कैन इट बी कटेल और नॉट एट वाई दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ इमरजेंसी ओनली हाँ नहीं करेगी ओनली फॉर द वायलेशन ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट बट वेदर ही हैज एक्चुअली डन सेडिशन और नॉट उसके लिए तो वो कोर्ट जा ही सकता है फॉर द मैटर ऑफ फैक्ट कि मैंने सेडिशन किया है या नहीं किया है अच्छा चलो लेट्स कीप इट फॉर द डिस्प्यूटेड विल फर्दर सेटल आप भी पढ़ के आना मैं भी पढ़ के आऊंगा विल सेटल इट अगेन ठीक है सेडिशस अलग चीज है कैसे जब तक आप सिडिशियस एक्टिविटी नहीं करोगे आप पे वन ट्वेंटी फोर ए लगेगा कैसे सी देर इज ए पर्टिकुलर केस कोई बिहार का केस है एक आई एम फॉरगेटिंग द नेम देर सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज मैं पैरामीटर इफ आई एम इन साइटिंग द वायलेंस Where वेर देर इज नो यूज ऑफ वायलेंस और नीदर आई एम नॉट प्रोवोकिंग वायलेंस वो सिडिशन के अंदर नहीं आएगा तो वो सुप्रीम कोर्ट का गाइडलाइन है बट गवर्नमेंट टाइम एंड अगेन हैज बिन उसको ताक पे रख के पीपल को प्रोसिक्यूट करती है मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस इन दिस अंडर सेक्शन वन ट्वेंटी फोर ए सुप्रीम कोर्ट में जाता है सुप्रीम कोर्ट बोलती है यहाँ तो केस ही नहीं है ठीक है बट वो फैक्ट ऑफ द केस पर डिसाइड होगा कि मैंने बोला है कि नहीं भारत तेरे टुकड़े होंगे ये बोला है कि नहीं इस बात का भी तो इशू है मैं बोलता हूं मैं क्लेम करता हूं मैंने बोला ही नहीं तो ये तो मैटर ऑफ फैक्ट है ना मैटर ऑफ लॉ इज डिफरेंट थिंग इफ आई हैव टोल्ड तो एम आई परमिटेड टू टेल दैट और नॉट दैट इज अ मैटर ऑफ लॉ ठीक है अभी के लिए इतना आप जान के रखो द वर्ड सेडिशन इज नॉट मैंशन अंडर आर्टिकल नाइनटीन टू ठीक है रिजनेबल रिस्ट्रिक्शन अगर आप सिर्फ लिटरल देखोगे कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ने मैंशन किया है कि नहीं देर आर ओनली फ्यू ग्राउंड 
like defamation, sovereignty, integrity, uh, affecting the friendly relation of India with other countries, contempt of court. So, all these things are mentioned under article 19, to sedition the word is not mentioned. यहाँ तक क्लियर है इस क्वेश्चन को बीइंग यूपीएससी ड्रॉप करते हुए आगे चलते हैं ठीक कहाँ थे हाँ दिस वाज विच ऑफ़ द फॉलोइंग इज़ ट्रू अबाउट आर्टिकल 24 ऑफ़ इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो देर आर टू आर्टिकल्स 23 एंड 24 दिस आर द राइट्स अगेंस्ट एक्सप्लोइटेशन सो वन इज़ टॉकिंग अब so, in context of that 24, it prohibits the employment of children below the age of 14. It prohibits the employment of children below the age of 14. It provides that the state shall secure that children are given opportunities and facility to develop in a healthy manner. This is rather a DPSP article 39. It prohibits employment of all children below age of 18 years in hazardous activities. This statement is true, but it is not given under Article 24. This is given under this particular act. There is a uh, Child Labor Act of 2016. Right? If you also see here, it prohibits the employment of children below age of 18, uh, below the age of 14 in factories, mines, teen char word he used kiya hai. Not absolutely. Article 24 absolutely prohibit nahi karta. But there is an act further in 2016. Wo kya bolta hai? It classifies children into three categories. One is below 14 years of age, then you have 14 and between 18, and then you have 18 and above. Teen category ke log aage. This 18 and above person are free to do any kind of work, hazardous, non hazardous. Further, they are consenting to it, they can do any kind of work. 14 to 18, these people are allowed to work, but with a certain restriction. They can only be engaged in non-hazardous activities. Hazardous activities kya hai? That is given, entire list is given like BD. BD jante na? Cigarette ka desi version. So, usko banane mein nahi engage kar sakte. Hotels, restaurant, highways, agar apes hoote hain, usme nahi engage kar sakte. So, there is a list given, there is a proper schedule to this act. Us act mein bhoat sara activities are mentioned as hazardous activities. There the person between the age 14 to 18 years cannot be engaged and wherever a person between 14 to 18 years is found to be engaged. The person who is engaging will be penalized. Wo jo fine collect kiya jata hai, there is child welfare rehabilitation, child labor rehabilitation fund, it will be given. Also, if between 14 to 18 years a person is employed, so they will they should be given two hours of break. A continuous jo work hota hai, wo teen ghante jada ki shift nahi honi chahiye. Uske beech mein fir unko do ghante ki break milni chahiye. Persons below 14 years of age cannot be employed in any kind of work except the family businesses. Jaysay, huh? entertainment uh, oh, art hai, so kaam kaan hai. So, jo art, child artist hoote hai, but there is a regulation for that. Either child artist should be used only in the vacations or after their schooling hours, but isko koi follow karta nahi hai. Serial ke shooting kaan se hoogi? Hai na? Serial mein toh itna chota se bachche hai, itna chota dhono ko saadhi karayi hoon hai. Pata nahi unke liye child marriage hai ki nahi hai. Thik hai. So, this is the classification, but these classifications are done in the Child Labor Act 2016. Abhi yaan constitution mein all these three statements are false, none of them. A, it is talking like a blanket statement. Anna, if you read article 24, 24, it is only talking about three things, factories, mines, etc. Isa karke likha hua hai. Thik hai? But agar yahi the question would have been about the 2016 act, it will be A, Sahi Consider the following statements about Child Labor Prohibition and Regulation Act 1986. It was later amended in 2016. It prohibits engagement of children below 14 years in all occupation except family enterprises. True. It prohibits the engagement of adolescent. So, the people between 14 to 18 are termed adolescent. So, adolescents in the hazardous occupation, they are prohibited. We have already covered that. Dono statement yaha pe, sahi ho jate hain. Acha, ghar mein koi badi bhaiya hai, chote bhaiya kya lakh rahi hai, toh nahi bolega, mene to kaam kara rahe hai, child labor. Thik hai, ye sab exempted hai. Family ke enterprise nahi hai, nahi hai. 
अब बच्चे पैदा करना इंटरप्राइज है विच वन ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कैटेगरीज ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट इनकॉर्पोरेट प्रोटेक्शन अगेंस्ट अनटचेबिलिटी एज अ फॉर्म ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन राइट टू इक्वालिटी फोर्टीन टू एटीन के बीच में आर्टिकल सेवनटीन आता है तो पता नहीं यूपीएससी इतनी ईजी सवाल क्यों पूछ रही है हाँ अच्छा ये छुपा देंगे बीच में सौ क्वेश्चन के अंदर कहीं छुपा होगा तो दिखेगा ही नहीं कि कहाँ पेपर में घर आके दिखेगा यार ये यार दो नंबर Consider the following statements with respect to fundamental rights mentioned in the Part Three of Indian Constitution. Pre uh, President of India is considered as the defender and guarantor of the fundamental rights of the citizens. Supreme Court. Fundamental right guaranteed by the Constitution of India can be enforced under Article Thirty Two of the Constitution. It can be enforced. It is true, but there are certain situation it cannot be national emergency. Uska ham alag se provisions padenge. तो फर्स्ट इज फॉल्स सेकंड इज ट्रू टू ओनली अच्छा इनकरेक्ट है तो वन ओनली राइट कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स अबाउट द रिट ऑफ हैबियस कॉर्पस मेंशन इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया इट इज इशूड बाय अ कोर्ट टू इंक्वायर द लीगलिटी ऑफ क्लेम ऑफ अ पर्सन ऑक्यूपाइंग द पब्लिक ऑफिस इट इज फॉल्स विच रिट इज दैट को वारंटो तो को वारंटो इज इशूड बाय द कोर्ट टू इंक्वायर की जो एसएससी में गया है घोटाले से गया है या एग्जाम देकर गया है सो दैट इज द लीगलिटी वेदर यू आर एलिजिबल इनफ टू होल्ड दैट ऑफिस और नॉट सो फर्स्ट इज फॉल्स इट कैन बी इशूड बोथ अगेंस्ट पब्लिक ऑफिशियल्स एंड प्राइवेट इंडिविजुअल्स मेरे अगेंस्ट है इशू करा सकते हो अगर मैं बाहर गया गेट बंद करके चला गया दिस इज इलीगल कन्फाइनमेंट आई एम स्टॉपिंग योर पर्सनल लिबर्टी राइट तो आप मेरे अगेंस्ट है इलीगल डिटेंशन हो गया नहीं I am not authorized to detain you, people. What right I have to detain you? No right. Can you arrest any person? You are not a police officer, though. Can any private person arrest any person? Yes, he can. वो तो फिर अलग तरह का arrest हो गया. So you will be punished for that. Three persons are authorized to arrest anyone. One is police, another is magistrate. Magistrate may be executive or judicial, and even you, being a private person, can arrest any person. जैसे आप जा रहे थे देखा कि कोई बंदूक उठाए किसी को मारने जा रहा है यू नो दैट ऑफेंस इज गोइंग टू बी कमिटेड विच इज अ कॉग्निजेबल एंड नॉन अवेलेबल इन नेचर यू कैन अरेस्ट दैट पर्सन टू प्रिवेंट द ऑकरेंस ऑफ द क्राइम इट इज योर राइट सेक्शन 46 सिक्स सी आर पी सी राइट तो आप कर सकते हो ये बट आपको पनिश करने का अधिकार नहीं है यू आर नॉट द कोर्ट योर राइट इज लिमिटेड यू विल सिंपली अरेस्ट द पर्सन और हैंड ओवर हिम टू द नियरेस्ट अवेलेबल पुलिस पर्सन दे विल टेक द प्रोसीडिंग्स देर आफ्टर बट यू कैन ऑल्सो अरेस्ट राइट हाँ बट लीगली होना चाहिए जैसे आपने वो अरेस्ट कर लिया आप बोला कि मेरा तो राइट है पता चला है नॉन अवेलेबल है तो इलीगल डिटेंशन लग गया आपके ऊपर इट इज इट कैन बी शूड बोथ अगेंस्ट पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट दिस इज ट्रू फर्स्ट वन इज फॉल्स सेकंड वन इज ट्रू वी हैव टू फाइंड द करेक्ट आवर आंसर इज बी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग रेट्स आर करेक्टली मैच मैंडमस कमांड इशूड बाई योर कोर्ट टू अ पब्लिक ऑफिशियल asking him to perform his official duty that he has failed to refuse to do so now two words or two things you must uh, note while uh, you are talking about mandamus the public official it should be his legal duty and he has refused or abstained from doing so then only mandamus can be issued not his moral duty moral duty ke liye mandamus nahi issue kar sakte first one is correct co warranto issued by a higher court to a lower court or a tribunal either to transfer a case pending with the letter or itself to squash nahi wo squash hoga the order of the letter in a case squash means kharij karna squash is a game so it's typing error squash the order this is false co warranto that what we previously discussed about the public office right certiorari is issued by the court to inquire into the legality of a claim of a person to a public office This is co-warrant to actually. This is false. So second and third is false. First one is correct. One only is the correct. So one is correct. What we need to do is find the correct na. Which pair correctly match hai. So sir one and one only is the correct. Yes. Consider the following statements about the application of fundamental rights to armed forces. Armed forces के ऊपर fundamental rights 
are the fundamental rights for the armed forces restricted who can restrict parliament right so article 13 restricts and abrogates the fundamental rights of the members of the armed forces paramilitary forces police forces intelligence agencies and counter intelligence agencies true or false it empowers it is just an enabling provision it is not that they have their right has been abrogated parliament and what is the purpose it was one of the very least debated fundamental right jo part 3 mein jo provision se usme sabse kam debate isi pe hua tha sab kuch ye hai police walon ko to right hi nahi dena so chhota uh, sa ek minor amendment move kiya gaya tha bas wo ho gaya tha but article 13 empowers parliament that fundamental rights of these category of people whether they are serving in armed forces or intelligence bureau of the union or state or uh, paramilitary armed forces matlab military army air force navy these are the military or paramilitary kon hote hain cisf metro mein jaate ho these are the paramilitary uh, forces so their fundamental rights can be restricted or abrogated what is the purpose to ensure discipline among them now so this is not a necessary it is just an enabling provision parliament can do it is not mandatory right article 33 empowers the parliament and the state legislature to make laws related to the abrogation of fundamental rights of the sahi hai galat kyun state legislature nahi it is parliament only it is parliament only 61 we have to find correct so d will go with neither there is some answer on youtube 61 a i hope that will be cleared now consider the following statement about the provision of martial law what is difference between martial law and national emergency both are mentioned in the constitution in martial law simply whatever is being done by the civil authority all those functions will be taken over by the military officials there are no grounds mentioned ki martial law kab laga sakte hain but the national emergency has a proper ground it can only be imposed on aggression and the internal disturbance was the old one it has now been changed to armed rebellion so national emergency can be imposed only on the two grounds so article 34 defines martial law as any situation where civil administration is run by the military authorities according to their own rules and regulation framed outside the ordinary law of the parliament ye to maine bola aisa hota hai maine ye thodi bola 34 mein likha hua hai it is not defined under article 34 martial law means the same thing which is written here but it is not mentioned under article 34 that so and so is called martial law right provisions related to it is mentioned in article 34 definition is not mentioned it i say uh, there is one abhi bahut is tarah ke questions aap upsc mein bhi dekhte hoge that definition whether it is defined or not so one to you will come to know after reading the provisions secondly there is a particular article in the constitution i am forgetting the article number 366 ya kahin hai there is a whole list of definitions given what do you mean by schedule caste तो एक बारी एग्जाम से पहले आप उस आर्टिकल को पढ़ के जाना दैट वट एवर थिंग्स आर डिफाइंड इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ये या तो आपको ऐसे दिखा हुआ मिल जाएगा प्रोविजंस में अदरवाइज देर इज अ लिस्ट ऑफ डेफिनेशन गिवन इन दैट आर्टिकल दिस मीन्स वॉट दैट मीन्स वॉट राइट मार्शल लॉ कैन ओनली बी इम्पोज ऑन द ग्राउंड ऑफ वॉर एक्सटर्नल एग्रेशन एंड आर्म रिबिलियन फॉल्स इट इज नेशनल इमरजेंसी कैन बी इम्पोज ओनली ऑन द ग्राउंड ऑफ वॉर एक्सटर्नल एग्रेशन एंड आर्म रिबिलियन राइट इट इज नॉट मार्शल लॉ बोथ द स्टेटमेंट आर इनकरेक्ट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया हैज मेड इट ऑब्लिगेटरी फॉर द पार्लियामेंट टू मेक लॉज टू पनिश विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग एक्शन अनटचेबिलिटी ह्यूमन ट्राफिकिंग स्प्रेडिंग कम्यूनल हेट्रेड पोस्ट रिलीजियस कन्वर्जन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया ने किसके लिए ऑब्लिगेटरी किया है वन एंड टू and uh, about spreading communal hatred is there any law in india 
there is no specific law as, as such but there are provisions in indian penal code and also sometimes if it is related to elections then representation of people act so there is one section 153 ipc that talks about this communal hatred 295a ipc so in dono mein there is a provision which punishes spreading communal disharmony among two religious groups right so these two are made obligatory for the parliament parliament can make law on these two as per the constitution other two these are the subject matter of the parliament but it is not made obligatory by the constitution of india parliament wishes they can do parliament does not right so one and two is the correct choice here fundamental rights mentioned in part 3 of the constitution of india primarily deal with political rights we have discussed it yesterday which of the articles of the constitution of india safeguards one's right to marry the person of one's choice article 21 right to life and liberty theek hai there is a act in india also domestic violence act suna hai so domestic violence act can be used by only females hai na or uh, it can be used earlier it was only mentioned that wife or married women now it has included the partners also so word uh, wife or th- that has been changed by partners so if any father or brother is not any uh, letting any women to marry the person of his or her choice it's a kind of domestic violence under that act theek ho ek tarah ka domestic violence bhi hai मैं टूल नहीं दे रहा हूं आप लोगों को भाई मैं कानून बता रहा हूं तो इट इज मेंशन अंडर आर्टिकल 21 अच्छा देयर इज अ पर्टिकुलर केस आल्सो ये मैं बताता हूं आप मेंस में अगर जरूरत पड़े तो लिख सकते हो तो लता सिंह वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश लता सिंह वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश देयर इज अ पर्टिकुलर केस ऑफ दिस रिलेटेड स्टेट ऑफ उत्तर प्रदेश 2006 का केस है इसमें सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज रिकॉग्नाइज्ड that yes it is a kind of right which is given under article 21 right to privacy is protected as an intrinsic part of right to life and personal liberty which one of the following is in the constitution correctly and appropriately imply so it is mentioned under article 14 and the provisions under 42nd amendment 17 and dpsp 21 and part 3 24 and part 3 which of the following is regarded in main features repeat ho gaya na which of the following are envisaged by the right against exploitation in the constitution of india right against exploitation that is 23 and 24 so prohibition of traffic in human being for forced labor and prohibition of employment of children in the factories one and four protection of interest of minorities 29 and 30 and abolition of untouchability equality so it is 17 our answer shall be one and four c with reference to writs issued by the courts in india consider the following statements mandamus will not lie against a private organization unless it is entrusted with a public duty mandamus will not lie against a private organization unless it is entrusted with a public duty so suppose if there is a private organization or a private person for that matter but they have been given the duty which is a public nature duty they have been given funds by the government so if they are failing in their legal duty can mandamus be applied there so that will be as a state so if a, any private individual acting as a public and they have been given a public duty and if they fails in that duty mandamus can apply but it cannot apply on any private person unless they have been entrusted with a public duty right so this is proof mandamus will not lie against a company even though it may be a government company false public sector undertakings they are a part of state any public minded person can be a petitioner to move to court to obtain a writ of quo warranto quo warranto can be sought by whom 
any person who is interested whether he is directly a party to it or not right so we have to choose which are correct so all of our correct right correct it undan acha mandam second is false right sorry so second is false first is true this is true one and three only what is the position of right to property in india it is a legal right available to citizen only legal right available to any person fundamental right available to citizen only neither fundamental nor legal legal so firstly jo fundamental hai you should know it was fundamental but now it is legal so it will not be a fundamental right at all now our confusion is legal right available to citizens or persons so word mention there is person not citizen so b is our answer consider the following statements in respect of bharat ratna and padma awards bharat ratna and padma awards are titles under article 181 of the constitution firstly you should know that article 18 abolishes title so what are the titles they should have been abolished by article 18 but are padma awards and uh, bharat ratna abolished so, nahi they are not the titles as per article 18 so this is false statement. Padma awards, which were instituted in the year 1954, were suspended only once. अच्छा पहले ये 1954 में आया है या नहीं? नहीं आया तो 54 में है. But this statement is false because they have been suspended thrice, not once. Right? Number of Bharat Ratna awards is restricted to maximum of five in a particular year. The statement is false. Right? it is three three bharat ratna awards can be given padma awards are many there are uh, various category of padma awards do you know the hierarchy so the top most civilian award of india is bharat ratna top most civilian award top most military award is paramvir chakra right so bharat ratna then you have padma vibhushan then you have padma bhushan then you have padma shri padma shri aise hi baantte hain ravina tandon ko mila na मतलब ऐसे ही नहीं मिला हो गया होगा मिल गया होगा बट ठीक है मार देते हैं राइट तो फर्स्ट वन इज फॉल्स दिस इज आल्सो फॉल्स ऑल ऑफ देम आर फॉल्स सो वन टू एंड थ्री विथ रेफरेंस टू इंडिया कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट जुडिशियल कस्टडी मींस एन एक्यूज इज इन द कस्टडी ऑफ कंसर्न मैजिस्ट्रेट एंड सच एक्यूज इज लॉकड अप इन द पुलिस स्टेशन नॉट इन जेल जुडिशियल कस्टडी आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट right during the judicial custody the police officer in charge of the case is not allowed to interrogate the suspect without the prior approval of the court correct statement do not second is correct first one is not correct why there are two kinds of custody police custody and judicial custody police custody is what you known by in the name remand jo bolte hain remand pe bhej diya that is police custody kutai karne ke liye le aate <laughs> so uh, usually the procedure is the people will be arrested and it is the fundamental right of everyone every person that within 24 hours they have to be produced before the nearest magistrate so the ideally after the arrest the person will be taken before the magistrate then the police may say i require to interrogate this person for my further investigation please grant me a police custody so judge saab may magistrate may give police custody or remand or magistrate may think nahi ab itna koi zyada prime facie evidence is not against this person so either magistrate can send him to the judicial custody so there police cannot directly interrogate the person they will police will need prior permission of the court and whosoever is in the police custody they are kept with police but the person who are in judicial custody they are not kept in the police station lock up they are kept in jails jahan pe central jail district jail in sub jails mein central jail doesn't mean ki wo delhi mein hai aur ek hi hai there are too many central jails in india so wo nomenclature alag hai it is not the union jail right so police custody and judicial custody ye difference aapko clear ho gaya this is false statement this is false because accused is locked up not in the police station but in regular jail in the judicial custody while during the judicial custody police cannot interrogate without the permission of the court this is true to only
you should also know that what are the ground what are the rights available to the person who is arrested it is mentioned under article 22 article 22 mentions certain rights which have been given to the person after arrest but these rights are not applicable on the persons who have been arrested under preventive detention unke sath kya hota hai 3 mahine tak rakh sakte hain jail mein hai na without producing before the court theek hai 3 mahine aur bhi badha sakte hain which one of the following in the indian polity is an essential feature that indicates federal that india is a federal in character independence of judiciary is safeguarded union legislature has elected representative union cabinet can have elected representative from regional parties the fundamental rights are enforceable by the court why so why independence of judiciary is a feature of federal why independence of judiciary is a federal feature yes so if there are different units who are devolving power from each other there is but obvious there will be disputes if there is no independent settlement of the dispute there will be trust deficit and federalism will break away so is wajah se jahan bhi aap dekho federalism hai there is independence of judiciary there are some countries like united kingdom that is not a federation their judiciary is still subordinate to the parliament abhi kuch 10 saal pehle to unke paas supreme court bhi nahi tha recently they got a supreme court but supreme court decisions can be overridden by the parliament hamare yahan nahi hai right so first option independence of judiciary is safeguarded in the context of india which one of the following is correct relationship between rights and duties i am talking about rights and duties rights are correlative with duties rights are personal and hence independent of society rights and duties uh, rights not the duties are important for the advancement duties not the rights are important लास्ट वाले दो तो ऐसे कुछ हवाबाजी वाले स्टेटमेंट लग रहे हैं राइट्स आर को रिलेटिव विद ड्यूटीज वट डू मीन बाई दिस एक्चुअली दिस इज अ गांधीन फिलोसफी इफ यू हैव अ राइट सम वन ओज अ ड्यूटी टू यू एंड इफ यू आर एंजॉइंग अ राइट यू मस्ट ओबे योर ड्यूटी तो देर इज अ केस नेग्लिजेंस के बारे में जानते हो आप वट इज नेग्लिजेंस अगर मैं होटल में खाना खाने गया और किसी ने मुझे बासी खाना दे दिया मैं बीमार हो गया दिस इज अ काइंड ऑफ नेग्लिजेंस ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट ऑन तो देर इज अ वेरी फेमस केस ऑफ द बाहर का केस है डॉन हॉग वर्सेस स्टीवन सिंह तो बेचारे लेने गए थे शराब पीने तो वहाँ पे उनको एक एडल्ट्रेटेड ड्रिंक मिल गया नेल था उसमें तो ही गॉट सिक बाई दैट एंड ही शूड हिम तो देर इज अ केस दैट अ पर्सन ओड ड्यूटी इफ द पेमेंट इज इज राइट देन यू मस्ट ओबे हिज ड्यूटी so wherever you do not fulfill your duty you do not take reasonable caution you are being negligent uske liye punishment ho sakti hai so where there is a right there is a duty so again take the example ki maine aapse pen kharida then pay, getting payment is your right then delivering the product is your duty rights are correlated with the duties kyunki jab tak kisi ki duty nahi hogi right ki remedy nahi milegi kise compensation mangoge if you have the right state owes the duty to you with reference to india consider the following statements when a prisoner makes out a sufficient case parole can be parole cannot be de denied sorry parole cannot be denied to such prisoners because it becomes a matter of his or her right what do you mean by parole uh, what do you mean by bail is, is bail and uh, parole both the same no bail is pre trial after you have been sentenced not you someone else have been sentenced to so, uske baad kya hoga parole mil sakta hai parole is for showing the good behavior aapko ghar mein shaadi hai kisi ki death ho gayi thode din ke liye aapko bahar jana hai you are good uh, you are showing good behavior the jail officials are satisfied the state government is satisfied that once released aap jail break karke nahi bhag jaoge you will come back to serve your sentence so if these grounds are satisfied you can be allowed on parole but this is not a right it is the discretion of the state now prison is a state subject so every state has their own parole rules so second statement is true first is false because it is saying it is the right of the prisoner so it is not the right of the prisoner which one of the following statement is correct 
rights are the claims of state against the citizen rights are privileges which are incorporated in the constitution of a state rights are claims of the citizen against the state rights are privileges of a few citizen against many uh, rights are privileges which are incorporated in the constitution of state nahi hoga kyun can there be any right if it is not mentioned in the constitution natural right human right magna carta england kahan constitution mein likha so it is not necessary that all rights or fundamental rights are mentioned in the constitution in our india we have part 3 that is mentioned that is one example but that is not necessary what is necessary that rights are the claims of the citizens against the state right state ka hamare against koi claim nahi hai hamara claim hai state ke against our answer is c rights are claims of the so we had this much for today and there are uh, many more questions from other topic there are few questions i am left with for the fundamental rights 25 26 more questions jo abhi ke baad wale fundamental rights hai like article 19 hum ne kya 14 15 16 we have discussed 19 we have not so 19 uh, till 32 we will do few questions of dpsp and uh, ye sab hum log till fundamental rights wale mein karenge then we will discuss for parliament parliament uh, and emergency center state so you will get very factual kind of questions hai na aur if you see the trend pichle 3 4 saal se pehle parliament se bhar bhar ke question aate the because they were very factual in nature of lately they are asking this kinds of question thoda conceptual what is the meaning of the state what is the relationship of law and liberty theek hai let's see chalo thank you